Unfortunately for governments, their objective of strong, sustained growth is never really met in the long term. Because growth is never really sustained, growth fluctuates. The economic cycle tells us why it fluctuates and what it looks like. <clears throat> so, economic growth, instead of just being a smooth line upwards, tends to go something like that. Yes, over time it increases, but it's never smooth. It tends to fluctuate like this. So on the axis here, we've got real GDP, we've got time. So just flipping real GDP down the y-axis. So you can see, over time, yeah, real GDP is increasing, but not steadily. And when we try and average out what this line looks like, we get something like this, don't we? So in red, we have actual growth in the economy. Basically, the level of aggregate demand over time. And the blue line gives us trend growth. And all the blue line is, it's a measure, okay, it's a measure of the average of actual growth over a given period of time. So I know this might be 50 years, 60 years, 40 years, doesn't matter. Okay, over a given period of time, if we average out what's going on with actual growth, we then get the trend rate of growth, which in the UK is believed to be around 2 to 2.5%. Two it measures how much the productive capacity of the economy increases each year. So, why does actual growth actually fluctuate? It can be a whole reason, um, a whole number of reasons, really. Um, the very most simple reason, which you don't really need to know, but at AS level, it's all you need to know, I guess, is shocks. Supply-side shocks, demand-side shocks. So when there is a demand-side shock, let's say a big housing market crash, that might lead to a huge fall in aggregate demand. It might be a credit bubble that bursts, which again can lead to a huge fall in aggregate demand. So demand side shocks, which mean growth falls rapidly. Uh, at the same time, it might be supply side shocks. So maybe it's a sudden increase in the price of oil, which then increases the cost of production, which reduces economic growth. Supply side shock. Maybe it's an increase in the price of commodities, an increase in the price of raw materials, a sudden shock, which people aren't expecting, which then causes a reduction in growth. So, when we look at this diagram, we can split it up into four different sections. At the peak of actual growth, we are experiencing a boom, rampant, high economic growth, normally with inflation at the same time. So we have a boom. The opposite of that, when we're at the trough of actual growth, the lowest point of actual growth at a point in time, we're experiencing a recession. A recession of economics is defined as two successive quarters of negative growth. That's very, very important. Two successive quarters of negative growth. So a recession uh, in this diagram is at the trough of actual growth at a given point in time. In between that, the economy is slowing down. We have a slowdown. And between a recession and a boom, we have a recovery. And at the time of making this video, it looks like the UK economy, and in fact the, the global economy, is experiencing an economic recovery. They're getting at least very, very slowly towards you know, stronger growth levels than uh, the deep recession that was uh, experienced in 2008. Fine, so you need to know those four things. Boom, followed by slowdown, followed by recession, followed by recovery. That's the cycle, the different stages of the economic cycle. Something else you can get from this diagram are the idea of what output gaps are. So you can see here that actual growth is never really a smooth upward line. Actual growth can deviate from the trend rate of growth. Actual growth can be below the trend rate of growth and can be above the trend rate of growth too. So when actual growth is below the trend rate of growth, is below potential growth, we have what's called a negative output gap. Where there is spare capacity in the economy, spare factors of production like labour, like capital, which could be used up, but that isn't being. So basically there is unemployment, you could say. Negative output gap, when actual growth is less than potential growth. Operating inside the PPC. <clears throat> but also you can get to a point of growth where actual growth is more than potential growth, in which case you have a positive output gap. So in the short term, you might have workers that are working ridiculous hours, unsustainable hours, you might have capital machinery that's working at full power. These are not sustainable. So in the short term, you might be able to produce more than your productive capacity, but that can't be sustained. Uh, when that occurs, 
When actual growth is more than potential growth, more than trend rate growth, you have a positive output gap. So there are two other fundamental things to take away from this. That's the economic cycle done. See you next time. Thank you.